Welcome, welcome, welcome to Above Replacement Radio. I am your host, Chris Gianta. You know what Christy Matthewson wor- wasn't worried about? S-I-E-R-A. When you're thinking about Pedro Siriaco, I mean, the only one that can compete is maybe uh, Hannes Wagner's 1908 season. Over there on the other side of the screen is Daniel Kern. Like, if we just clip together every time we've talked about him on other people's profiles, we've done a Mickey Cochran episode. I can't get past Rabbit Marinville. It's you know, it's not necessarily Hall of Fame. It's not necessarily above average, but we can guarantee you we are better than just the standard replacement level college sophomore. And welcome to Above Replacement Radio. We're talking baseball kind of whenever. I'm your host, Christian. So over there on the other side of the screen is Daniel Curran. How you doing, Daniel? Chris, I'm doing well today. We got some breaking news about 30 minutes before we started the show. So, uh, yeah, I, that hasn't happened for a while, I feel like. Breaking news right before or during a pod. Yeah, no. Yeah. Like, uh, there's. I think there's been some goodies uh, while we've recorded. Maybe maybe there yeah. was I, – I forget if it was, like, Jace Tingler or Luis Rojas got fired during one no, of our – No, it was uh, Mike Schilt. Mike Schilt got fired yeah. during one of our that podcasts. That was way back, though. That was last season. Yeah, last season. But, yeah, true. Been a while. I mean – uh for three months, there there literally was no news in uh in Major League Baseball, um given the lockout, but yeah, exciting stuff. Um, Joe Girardi of the Philadelphia Phillies has been fired after uh, what is it now two and a half ish years of managing the club. Yeah. Um, the Phillies got out to a twenty two and twenty nine start. Uh, to their season um, you know disappointing for sure and uh, they fired Joe Girardi uh, what are your initial thoughts on uh, on this firing my initial thoughts is that it makes sense the Phillies have been have our what are they 22 and 29 right now I believe yeah yeah they're 22 and 29 they are 12 games back already in the uh, NL East and it's we're not even two months into the season I know it's June but the season started April 7th so uh, this has just been a rough go for them obviously like they do have the best team in the National League in their division so it's you know it's hard to be like well how do they stand up to the best team in the National League that's not fair but all, all of the leading teams are right within each other the Brewers are only two games behind the Mets and they would be the three seed in the NL right now so this this team has been mightily struggling. And even if you're 22 and 29 at this point, the best case scenario is probably that you're like, I don't know, like eight, seven games back. Like you're going to be far back regardless. So this is a team that every single year since 20, like 18, maybe we've been thinking, Hey, this has got to be, be a year they get to the playoffs. Right. And it's never happened. They've only had one 500 season with Joe Girardi and it was 82 and 80 last year. Yeah, exactly. For sure. And, uh, and yeah, we, we have been saying like, this is a team that should be making a, a playoff run. And like, you look at all the off season dealings they've had in that time, uh, most notably Bryce Harper also, you know, JT rail Muto, Zach Wheeler, uh, very, you know, very big addition back in the 2019, 2020 off season, as well as like, even little things like uh, Gene Segura and then, yeah, this offseason, uh, Kyle Schwarber and Nick Castellanos. So they've really kind of Even been... re-signing JT Real Muto too? Yeah, re- yeah, trading for him, first of all, and then re-signing him uh, mm-hmm. for five years. And, uh, and yeah, like, so they've always been making improvements to their team, um, you know, outside of maybe, I guess, one specific area, but still, like, they should be doing better than, you know, seven games below 500, uh, you know, two months into the season. Yeah. See, you mentioned like the bullpen. I mean, you alluded to the bullpen. You didn't mention that, but like they have been making the additions though. Like you look through the last couple of years, right? Like this year they added Brad Hand, Corey Knable in the past, Jose Alvarado. They added Jerry's Familia this year, Ian Kennedy last year, Archie Bradley last year. Like they've tried. It just has never worked. Yeah. Yeah, it, and the, like they haven't the the additions haven't been effective. Like at least, no. the, at least like the Bryce Harper Zach Wheeler additions have been uh, effective. But like, yeah, they they just kind of plummet um, when it comes to the bullpen. Um, and, and yeah, like 
yeah, the team has been underperforming. And like, you know, Joe Girardi, he's, you know, he, uh, it's, he's not, you know, exactly a, a revolutionary of sorts. Like it's not, it's, you know, he's kind of a standard manager. And if the team is underperforming, it's not, I, it, I don't think it was a uh, heartbreaking at all for the Phillies to make this decision. Um, it just like, that was just kind of the guy that was available for them. And they, they chose him and didn't work out. And, uh, I, I don't know. It's, that seems like they're, they're all, that's all it is to it. I, I don't really know. Yeah, there doesn't really seem to be that much other than this, just a simple baseball move that I don't think anyone's outraged in saying this shouldn't have happened. Like, I don't know. I don't know what the reaction looks like in Philly right now, uh, because this is very fresh news. Let me check, uh, I guess like some some mentions here. Yeah, like like Joe Girardi, he's you know, he spent what 10 years with the Yankees and now yeah. Uh now he's with the Phillies and I mean doesn't seem to be like the new school like the the very trendy new school uh manager type. Um I mean the I think his biggest criticism was having a uh, like Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola go a full nine. <laughs> Catching his starters, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially just... with Wheeler's past injury history, including this year. Um, so I've seen a bit of a mix of reactions on Philly's Twitter. It's kind of, it's A, it's like, good thing this needed to happen. And it's B, this isn't going to change anything, which I think both can be right at the same time. Like, yeah. I don't. Like, I don't think this is going to be a turning point for the Phillies. I still think that their struggles are still going to exist. I do think that some of their struggles as of late specifically have been uh, unexpected. I mean, Chris, what was the storyline before them going into this year? It was they're going to hit, but they're going to play tough or pretty bad defense. They're going to have a rough bullpen, but they're going to hit. And they haven't hit. They have not hit since May 15th. They are. They have a 222 team batting average. Uh, 295 OBP, 339 slugging, and a 79 weighted runs created plus. That is the worst in the majors over that time. They also have a 0.2 F4 from their position players, uh, which also is the worst in the majors over that time period. So, I mean, the the one thing that you expected to perform has not performed. And when the offense isn't going for that team, there's really not much that can go right. Uh, Yeah, for sure. Especially given that defense where like, you know uh, pitcher pitchers can do as well as they can but uh the defense will hold them back to a degree yeah. um like for a statistical analysis of that the team era is 405 but their team fip is 368 so indicates they should be doing like yes almost almost like 0.4 runs earned runs per nine better uh which is a little alarming but yeah like, I mean, uh, if you, even if you look at the rotation right now, uh, the rotation over this um, over this time period since May 15th, when since they've been struggling, uh, they have a FIP of 3.09, which is the best in the National League, the third best in the majors. Their ERA is at four. That's, yeah. It's almost a full run. And also that's uh, that is the 13th best in the league. So, yeah. yeah, the defense has been holding the back, but that's kind of what we expected. Like yep. I mentioned, though, if the offense isn't going, there's nothing that really can go. The only thing that's been performing is uh, the starting rotation. Another stat on them, since May 15th, they lead the league, all of the major leagues, in K-rate minus walk rate, 22.4%. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, like Wheeler, Eflin, uh, Nola, Gibson, Ranger Suarez, they've been doing their thing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like, uh, you know, it, like they've, they kind of have created depth with that, uh, with that rotation. I feel like the narrative for maybe a couple of years, um, at least before the season started was, you know, they got Wheeler, Nola and not much else, but yeah, now that, you know, I think Gibson Suarez and Eflin have developed into, uh, some very reliable, uh, starters especially as of late as given you know they're fielding independent pitching but you know there doesn't seem they don't seem to be getting the run support um in the past couple weeks and uh and yeah maybe it's a 
and yeah, maybe this Joe Girardi move is a move to kind of, you know, get the, get the team moving, I guess, you know, I don't know if that's the yeah. most analytical they're thing hiring, to say. They're hiring from within. Uh, Rob Thompson has been named the interim manager. Um, I believe he was just on the coaching staff beforehand. I, I mean, the, he had to have been, there's no way they hired anyone else. Right. Having just fired him. Yeah. At what yeah. point, at what point do we think that we really know what the Phillies need? Because they fired Gabe Kapler and our, our view was, yeah, they need a, they need a different type of manager. Like they're a team that can go with an old school type of guy. They hired Joe Girardi and the same thing happens. Like there really wasn't that much of a difference between Gabe Kapler and Joe Girardi's tenure. And they are two very polar opposite types of managers. So it's hard to see where the Phillies go from here. Yeah. I, I don't think they're going to hire for the rest of the season. I think they're kind of just going to stick with what they got because it would be weird to hire mid season when you're still trying to make a playoff push. And I don't think this will like they're eliminated from the playoffs yet. Like I still think it's possible to make a run. It's unlikely, obviously, but I mean, the offense has to get going again. You can't really expect much from the defense, the bullpen. You can just cross your fingers and the rotation will do its thing. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, yeah, in, in terms of the the Phillies, and I, I'm not even sure. Like, I, it doesn't seem like they're firing based off like an, uh, I like a baseball ideology thing. Like, they need a different type of manager. It's probably more of a a clubhouse move. Like maybe, maybe they just think, uh, you know, Rob Thompson is going to connect with the players more, or that Joe Girardi just wasn't doing his job. Uh, you know, managing the clubhouse uh, as well as he should have not indicating that the Phillies have like bad team chemistry or anything, but you know, it's possible that just, yeah, Joe Girardi wasn't getting the most out of his players and they're just trying a new guy. Probably not even, probably not even an, a thing with the ideologues of like, uh, you know, shifting baseball philosophies uh, within management. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to imagine the vibes are really good right now in that clubhouse. Like not even because of the firing, just simply because they're not winning. You know, it's hard yeah. for it's hard for the clubhouse to be to be rallying around stuff when there's no winning. And this might have just been a this might have just been a move where something had to change. So the answer was simply had to be manager. Yeah, exactly. Because like, you know the Phillies couldn't really go on with what they were. They couldn't continue doing what they were doing throughout this season. They had to do something, and. I mean, I guess the other options maybe were like Dave Dombrowski goes, but I don't think they were ready to do that because I don't think, I don't know how much he's really to blame for any of this. Like how is like, is it really his fault that Nick Castellanos is underperforming offensively and doing exactly what we knew he would do defensively? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, there are a lot of offensive players that are underperforming. Do you know who has the, um, out of like the regular players who has the second highest uh, OPS and OPS plus among in the lineup actually just sorry just um just ops plus um this as the season as a whole yeah like people that are like you know how on baseball reference they'll show like the like the lineup yeah yeah for this season as a whole obviously bryce harper has been the best offensive player and he's been playing with a torn ucl but who do you think has been the second best player on this team offensively um well if it's a surprise i would guess uh gene segura He's actually injured. It's Odubel Herrera. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. They signed him for less than $2 million this year. Uh, he's played 31 games. He's had only 100 plate appearances, but he's slashing 274, 307, 484 for a, for a 791 OPS, 123 OPS plus. Most of those are the second best on the team. Yeah. So <laughs> it's not Castellanos. It's not Kyle yes. Schwarber. It's not JT Real Muto. Uh, not Alec Bohm. <laughs> no, it yeah. is Odubel Herrera. This guy who just somehow can't find his way out of Philly. Yeah, he's just yeah, he's uh basically yeah the equivalent of of Mike Schmidt, uh staying in staying in Philly forever. Um, yeah, he's uh continuously there, but yeah, um, 
yeah the 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 move yeah it's it's like i don't know it's not surprising no i wouldn't say that um um yeah. side note they also have negative 21 outs above average that is tied for the la- for the worst in the league with the colorado rockies oh wow um yeah, yeah Dodgers, I mean, uh, by the way have negative nine that's kind of crazy I thought I, I thought I looked yesterday and I thought the team in last had less, but maybe I had a filter on it. Um, I'm gonna look at these. Look at these rankings. Yeah, yeah, tied for last. Um, who is negative nine? The Dodgers, you said. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. They're weird. Um, it is very weird. But they do shift a lot, so like I don't know. I guess they don't have guys moving as much. Yeah, I don't know. The Blue Jays shift the most when they have four, so who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, yeah, Phillies. Yeah, Phillies defense expecting uh, or performing as expected, and uh, you know it's it's as you say, when the offense is down, the team is down, and that's what's happening. Even with the starting pitching doing what it does, you know, you have bad defense that's going to cancel out a lot of the good starting pitching. You have a bad bullpen that's also going to do the same. And you have a bad offense. You're not going to get anything to support it. Yep. 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 For sure. Um, all right. So what do you think if you were to take a guess, who is who is the next manager that they hire? Um, it's funny. Like, let's isn't, just isn't Sam Fold like their general manager. Yes, and he wanted to manage. Yeah. But I feel like he's going to stick in the role he has now. But it's I could see him getting hired as a manager. Yeah, because it's funny because, like, it's weird to be general manager when Dave Dombrowski is president of baseball operations. Um, Yeah. Like, I remember in 2016, uh, like, Mike Hazen had that role. And, like, you never heard, like, oh, Mike Hazen's dealing right now. It's, you know, it was Dave Dombrowski. But, was he even know, like at the press conferences? I don't even know. <laughs> but uh, I mean, he eventually went on to be the D backs GM, I believe. Yeah. Yes. I and he uh, still is. And yeah, it still is. But like, yeah, Sam Fold, um, I- I'm wondering, like, yeah, he wanted to manage and he was seen as like the top managerial candidate of 2021 along with like alex cora and maybe will venable Mm -hmm. but um but yeah i I wonder if there's a pay gap between gm and manager if if it favors manager or gm but um i imagine it's something like dave dombrowski would talk to sam fold about if if dombrowski's still there for 2023 do you think if they wanted to hire from within like they did, they would have just put Sam Fold there? Or would it have been a weird to change manager and GM at the same time midseason? Potentially. And it's it might be a weird transition for him to go from mm-hmm. front office to on the field, like well, immediately. Right away, like right in the middle of the season. Yeah. Um, Thompson's what, their bench coach? I am checking that right now. It'd be funny if he was like <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's the like best assistant coach. GM. Side uh, note, he's actually older than Joe Girardi. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe it'll be a nice. They're, uh, the Mike Phillies Schultz assistant effect. pitching coach and director of pitching development has has the exact same name as one of my music teachers in high school. Yeah, nice. I'm just noticing that now, that's pretty cool. Good, good for him that he uh that he moved on yeah <laughs> definitely definitely did not know he was that like weird that he didn't coach my team when i was in high school and he was there but yeah made, made quite now he's with jump. the phillies yeah they just saw his music teaching ability and was like that can carry over to baseball yeah he's like he can you teach this guy how to throw a cutter yeah he yeah he actually is the reason ranger suarez had a 136 era last year <laughs> yeah uh he you're... actually advocated for him to be used as, as the starter yeah <laughs> he started out as a reliever and he was like hey this guy can go long innings yeah yeah he he started struggling once they stopped uh listening to him yeah i don't know i don't know why they ever stopped um but yeah uh so yeah the phillies the phillies um i don't know like they're they're kind of a they're they're kind of funny like uh 
they're they're sort of they're almost like at lol mets territory they're not they're they might be they're not like quite there and they don't have the long track record of it but they you know keep this going for a decade and they're they're there i don't even think that i think give the mets a championship this year and it's low phillies yeah like it could end this year yeah for sure like it it just like seeing how some of these games have ended for them and just have gone for them in the late innings it it and seeing that the Mets have been doing the opposite this year. Yeah. It's uh I think there there's two factors. One of them is Mets win a World Series. Another is Mariners make the playoffs. Oh yeah. Because if the Mariners make the playoffs, the Phillies have the longest active playoff drought in baseball. That's crazy, yeah. You know it's very funny. I was just looking. Uh they're on Sunday night baseball in like a few weeks against the Cardinals, which I guess is a good team, but it's like thrilling matchup yeah yeah i mean the, like two if you were optimistic before the season two s- potential second place teams yeah i mean i think i had the phillies winning the division i'm pretty sure i did you you had them uh winning the division i'm either fit or either winning the division or finishing second you didn't have the braves i think you i think you i think you had them as the four seed Maybe I had them as my NL sleeper team and I'm dead wrong right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had them in second place and yeah, that doesn't look to be and a playoff team. And that doesn't look to be, um, look to be anything promising. Uh, I'm just looking to see, uh, what other games are happening that Sunday. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at, uh, that week with Phillies Cardinals as Sunday night baseball. And yeah, there's some good matchups. There's Dodgers Padres. Yeah. How is that? Not it. Giants, White Sox, Astros, Angels, uh, and, uh, Blue Jays Rays. (laughs) Like, yeah. Blue Jays Rays. Like, yeah. The, I also wish Sunday night baseball would cater to more than five markets a year. Yeah, like the Blue Jays. Like every single Sunday, it's Fenway, Yankee Stadium, Bush Stadium, AT&T Park, or Oracle Park, Dodger Stadium, City Field, Truist Park, Citizens Bank Park, and like that's it. Yeah, Field. Like the Blue Jays were projected to be a very good team. Uh, Rays always projected to be a very good team. I understand that like not a lot of people just, want yeah. to watch the Rays, but the Blue Jays aren't a team where like people are – not lining up to watch them i I wish i wish sunday night baseball would be more like uh the sunday night football game and not the monday night football game very true yeah like sunday night baseball should be the mat the best matchup it shouldn't be the team that everyone knows yeah like cardinals cubs isn't a fun matchup this year it's phillies mets (laughs) phillies mets isn't a good matchup this year the card i know and i know that i know that they yeah I know that they scheduled Phillies Mets, you know, before the season and the Phillies are supposed to be better, which is not their fault, but like Cardinals Cubs and also like Reds Cubs is the field of dreams game too. Yeah. And like, yeah, I know Philly- that they're, they're picking the field of dreams game because of location, but like that's that stadium seats like 8,000 people. Like I promise you, if you put like a Dodgers game at the field of dreams, that you will find enough Dodgers fans to fill that stadium along with, I don't know, like, da, I don't know who's another like East Coast team, like Dodgers Mets. If you if you put the Field of Dreams game as Dodgers Mets, I promise you, you could find enough fans to fill that stadium. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's a fan issue is necessarily like uh, having having two teams travel like two thousand miles game. to for one game, but. <laughs> Still, well, yeah. I, just, I mean, like, just keep just keep the White Sox out there. At least they're like a yeah good team. Or have the Cubs face a, a better team than the Reds. Have Cubs White Sox out there. Yeah, why not? Yeah, they're fun. Um, yeah, yeah, but it's like yeah, it's Phillies Mets like at least three times a year, which is frustrating because I mean, if we're just brainstorming ways to make a one game series far away work, what if you did like an interleague matchup that's a two game series, but you had an off day in between, so it's like. I don't know, like Dodgers, Dodgers, Yankees, they play on the, at the Field of Dreams on Tuesday. They have an off day Wednesday. They play in New York Thursday. 
and that's a two game series and they play two in LA later in the season. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, that would be I like that for sure. Um, but yeah, uh, or, uh, just have the Reds play the Savannah bananas. True. That works as well. I think that would be even pretty, matchup. Pretty even. Yeah. Yeah. I know who everyone is going to want to win. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the Phillies fired Joe Girardi. Um, so, uh, another team that, uh, is struggling as of late. And I think, I think just weekly, we're just going to have, a a, um, a Los Angeles angels, legitimate legitimacy check. Mm-hmm. And, uh, right now they're, they're, they're falling a little bit. They are not legit right now. They are not legit. They are. If, yeah, if, if some teams are too legit to quit, uh, the, <laughs> They're, the Angels have they're, quit. They're quit right now. <laughs> their, 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 their legitimacy status is quit <laughs> um, <laughs> until further notice. Until but, until Mike Trout gets a hit. Yeah. <laughs> he is over his at least last 10. Yikes. Um, must be in a lot of uh, three, uh, what? Two two counts uh, on the road. On the road in the fifth in the inning. Fi- in the fifth inning. I did. I actually checked it the other day. He did not. Actually, he played two games yesterday. I suppose. I don't think it's possible though, because the Angels scored one run in each game. He definitely didn't. He definitely couldn't have gotten a hit in that situation last night because Jamison Tyon was throwing a perfect game until the seventh, or until yeah. the eighth, I guess. Yeah. For those unaware of what we're talking about, uh, right, right at the peak of lockdowns, we uh. We discovered that Mike Trout was at the time 0 for 18 with uh, in the fifth inning on the road through a 2 2 count. Um, and was there another filter? Uh, no one out. A- and no one out. And no one out. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it can only really exist. Like, since Mike Trout's at the top of the order, you can only really come up to start the fifth inning if the offense like scores or if they got if they get guys on base basically yeah that's very true um but yeah the angels have lost eight in a row um yes so not the best uh they're two good teams as well uh what was that to two good teams as well um yes yeah they they have been they have been doing it yeah they they lost a four game they took a four game sweep to the uh to the blue, blue jays, jays and just took a three game sweep to the yankees who um you know are two very well like probably will be in the playoffs uh you know two two teams that are probably going to be in the playoffs this year mm-hmm. um and oh yeah i'm just looking at the standings now the two top teams in the american league east yes. um angels are still in second place in the al west um, probably have fallen in the in the wild card ranks, but actually no, I think they still would have a wild card spot in the uh, in the modern playoffs. But but yeah, they've lost eight in a row. Uh, it seems to be their pitching that has been the problem, um, especially starting. I think they've just had a bad like turn and a half through the rotation. Um, and yeah, Mike Trout has been falling a little bit. What what have you been thinking about this? Uh, about this eight game losing streak. I mean, I know that the angels get a lot more, have a lot more pressure to do well and are therefore under a bigger microscope than most other teams because they have two generational super superstars, actually three, if you count Taylor Ward. Yeah. But I don't want to overreact too much because teams are going to have, you know, ebbs and flows over a 162 game season and an eight game losing streak might just be a, a, a bigger low, I guess. And I'm yeah. not ready to cancel the season yet, but I feel like this does cater a bit to my belief that I had a couple pods ago that we could be looking at the Angels as the seventh best team in the American League based on a record. Yeah. Uh, since May 25, they have a 6-3-9 ERA, which is uh, – and that's when their losing streak started. 6-3-9 ERA, which is second worst in the league, and the only team – uh, worse than them is the Rockies, which first of all, it's, you know, Makes Rockies sense. rotation isn't great. And second of all, Coors, 
Um, it would be funny though if they if it was all road games. I, how I many think. how many runs did they give up that doubleheader the other day? By the way, uh, the Angels yesterday. Only yeah. Um, or no, no, no. The uh, the Rockies against the Marlins a couple days ago. Oh, I don't know. It was the day that Edward Cabrera threw a ninety-seven mile an hour changeup. <laughs> um, Which and the Angels' joke. starting rotation has a seven three two seven three two ERA and five eight four FIP. Uh, during this runs. eight game losing streak, and yeah, like looking at the schedule, you can just see that you know, like Sandoval had a bad start, probably his first bad start of the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cindergard, I think, um, I don't think was great if I remember correctly. Michael Lorenzen actually had a decent start, he was like the only one. Um, Shohei was Shohei Otani, uh, yesterday had a rough start, gave up three home runs, uh, wasn't striking out a lot of guys. And uh, Reed Detmers had a rough start, but last night actually had a decent start. Um, but, you know, that was kind of a rarity uh, among the staff. And uh, Chase uh, Silseth had a, had a rough start as well. So, I mean, you can just kind of chalk it up to a bad, a bad uh, turn of the rotation and maybe, you know, they'll turn it around. And also facing some stiff competition as well is going to make things tougher. Um, but I think, you know, I, I'm not going to make any conclusions based off of this uh, eight game losing streak, but um, part of me is like, I've kind of been waiting for them to fall and maybe they're starting to fall, or maybe it's just a thing where it's a bad turn through the rotation and um, they really just face some, some tough teams and some good trending teams. I think the biggest takeaway you can bring from this is uh, their ability to play up to competition. Like if they if they get swept by the Blue Jays and the Yankees, two teams that are expected to make the playoffs, what happens if they make the playoffs and have to play one of those two teams? And you know we'll have to see what happens when they play like the Twins. They haven't played them yet, I don't believe. You know, the Astros when they continue to play them, all of the good teams in the league, the Rays, who I believe, yeah. I mean they are they already play the Rays. They they no hit them, but. You know, I mean, it's kind of the conversation we had about the White Sox last year, right? Like, yeah, they have good, they have a good record, but when they play teams that are better than them or as good as them, they kind of fall because the conversation for my entire life has been get Mike Trout to the playoffs, whatever you do, just get him to the playoffs. Yeah. But if you get Mike Trout to the playoffs and we have a repeat of 2014, who cares? Yeah, right. Very true. That's a very true statement. Um, because like people are going to realize it's not about making the playoffs. It's about doing well in the playoffs. And we're not going to realize that until it comes playoff time with the angels, because right now getting them to the playoffs at all is a stretch. Yeah, exactly. Especially if, especially in the modern playoff format where you could just get a two game sweep and you're out of there. Yep. Um, like no one's going to remember that. Uh, like, yeah. What if Shohei Otani doesn't even make a start because Patrick Sandoval <laughs> and like Noah Syndergaard happened to be better in than him right now. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And I'm looking at the, the schedule breakdown for the angels. And I mean, um, like some of the, like, it's not a direct trend. Like they're three and four against the Astros, which isn't too bad. And they're uh, you know, they, they won two out of three against the Rays but yeah, I mean, they just got swept by both we the, have the uh, and Yankees, and they were. They're gonna be. Sorry, they're good. the Angels are playing in the Desperation Bowl this weekend. Um, oh wait, who are they playing? Check. All right, I'm gonna have to scroll down. Let's think of other desperate teams. Ooh, that's yeah. what I thought. <laughs> yep. Yep. They're playing the Phillies. Um, yeah, that's the, the storyline everyone knew was going to happen when the Phillies and Angels face each other. Oh, my God, it's the desperation ball. Yeah. Um, Not the, oh, my God, it's Mike Trout and Bryce Harper. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the old 2012 debate, who's going to be better? <laughs> um, it's yeah. funny because they never faced each other. And, yeah, the, the Angels have taken advantage of, of some lesser teams like the A's, they're five and two against them. Uh, Miami, they won uh, both their games against them, and they they had a four game sweep against the Guardians, um, who aren't like necessarily the worst team in the world, but you know, Angels should be, I guess, better than them. Uh, but yeah, I guess they've fed off lesser teams, haven't been as good against uh, against better teams. 
yeah I, I think I said that correctly yeah. and yeah that's funny that <laughs> it's the desperation bowl that should be an I mean at least one team is going to win that series yeah so one <laughs> team is going to get a much needed series win and then the other team is gonna just have it's a three-game series right yeah yeah, yeah Friday so through Sunday. there is going to be a series winner uh that's going to be an that's probably the best series to watch all weekend just for the just for that yeah. purpose alone not based on talent Actually, yeah, based on talent, Mike Trout, Bryce Harper, Shelly Otani, Taylor Ward. Yeah, spoiler alert. Odubel Herrera. Um, yeah, Odubel Herrera. Um, yeah, like uh, Brad Hand. Bad Hand. Brad, yeah, Hand. Brad Hand versus Archie Bradley. Archie Bradley returned to Philadelphia that everyone is anticipating. The do you Archie think they're Bradley give... revenge games. Do you think they're going to give him a video? Um, they got to, right? Yeah, I mean, he helped you. He helped you get to 500, right? Yeah, yeah. Like he had to have had a, a wins above replacement above one. Like you don't, you don't get to 500 without Archie Bradley. Yeah, yeah, I, it's possible. I don't even know. I don't even know if he got above one. Um, I'm checking right now. Yeah, he was at. Uh, he was at 0.7 on Baseball Reference last year. Round that up. But, yeah, rounded it up, and also I feel like his F4 might have been better because, I mean, his ERA was probably better than his FIP. Just going off the top of my head. Her FIP better than wasn't. ERA. It wasn't, actually. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just round that 0. .7 up. And... Yeah, I mean, listen, listen. So his, his, his F4 was 0.3. So that's uh, that's a point five, and you round that up. He, I mean, you don't get to five hundred without Archie Bradley. Yeah, simple with, as that. Without Archie Bradley, you don't have your best season <laughs> since twenty eleven. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you know what? It's so probably not wrong. A, give him a video. I think, I think we need to uh i think we need to tweet the phillies here yeah. <laughs> according to the baseball reference and i guess i don't know we could go fan graphs but you don't have your best you don't have your your best uh your best record in a decade come on um yeah, so as Daniel tweets that out, very necessarily. Um, I mean, that's that's our uh, that's our Angels talk, our our weekly Angels legitimacy legitimacy check. Uh, right now, they're they're on the quit side, but you know, I I wouldn't be surprised me if they got back on the on the legit side. Um, so for- I got the uh, at Phillies. I know you're busy right now with the whole manager thing, but you better give Archie Bradley a video tribute tonight. <laughs> <laughs> send tweet yes <laughs> uh yeah that's pretty sick yeah. um <laughs> so uh it's gonna be great yes you know so many he has so many memories in his 51 innings pitched oh yeah i mean a 50 a 55 percent ground ball rate yeah, how about that think, think about those Fantastic. all those negative launch angles absolutely uh, with the team with that didn't get converted to outs yeah <laughs> yeah all those ground balls that got through the hole after dd gregorius couldn't <laughs> couldn't sprawl out to get them <clears throat> um yeah i guess uh i guess we can talk about one more team underperforming um so far and that's the uh chicago white Sox. Mm-hmm. they're interesting um I, like it's weird because like I don't know there's there's only a couple guys where you could say they're severely underperforming it I think just the team as a whole is kind of just not doing well um I mean they have been riddled with injuries they lost Robert to the COVID IL Eloy's hurt right now Tim Anderson just went down they had they had to lose. Uh, I mean, they had a tough series in Toronto, where they were unable to use uh, Dylan Cease and Kendall Graveman, which is two of their, you know, key players. Yeah, yeah, very true. Um, Liam Hendricks has been 
it's weird to say he's underperforming because he's been good, but you look at what Liam Hendricks has been, and it's like, well, that's not it. Yeah, that's true. I was about to say, um, I, I saw last night, he has seven walks this year, um, which is only, you know, it's still 2.9 walks per nine. That's better it, than average, it, but that's as many as he year? had last year. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. <laughs> he also has three home runs given up. Right, right. But he has, you know, 13.7 strikeouts per nine, so whatever. But yeah, I mean, um, looking at the team, yeah, they're 23 and 26. Their team OPS plus is 88. That's pretty bad. And their team ERA plus is 92, um, which is, yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, yeah, and, you know, they're, they're kind of suffering a little bit with the – with not having Lance Lynn. Um, also Dallas Keuchel was even worse than last year, last year, or this even worse yes. than last year, this year. He's DFA'd though. Yeah. He got DFA'd um, after putting up a seven, eight, eight ERA and a six, two, one FIP and having as many strikeouts as walks <laughs> this yes. year. Um, just, I, don't know, uh, I don't know if that is to say that he strike, he didn't strike out a lot of guys or he walked a lot of guys. Yeah, he <laughs> he he walked. Yeah, he walked it quite a bit. He had five point six Ks per nine and walks per nine. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like. So that that doesn't help. And you know, having yeah, having uh, Lin out has not been great. Uh, I think Giolito is coming back from injury, so they haven't gotten as many starts as they would have liked out of him i think he missed a couple at the beginning of the year um and uh and yeah like uh their bullpen you know i they they lost garrett crochet before the season started so that's a little bit of a of a falter and then if with in terms of guys underperforming uh yes money grandal is the biggest uh underperformer this year he has had a little bit of bad luck, but still, I mean, a, a 43 OPS plus is not going to do it. Uh, and then AJ Pollock has not been the addition they have hoped so far. Uh, he has a 78 OPS plus uh, in, in uh, 122 plate appearances. And uh, there are also another injury I forgot to mention, Eloy Jimenez. He's back on the IL and has been for a very long time. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, I, it, it's a mix of injuries and underperformance for the White Sox so far. I'm looking at Aaron Bummer right now. He has 10 hits per nine. And my my initial thought was, oh, are they just like, are they not shifting on him? And he's giving up a lot of ground ball hits again. But that's not really the case. He's actually getting hit, like, not the way he's supposed to. He has a 53.5% ground ball rate, which is the lowest of his career. And it's over 23 points lower than last year, which obviously to, to compare him to last year isn't fair, but yeah. where those ground balls have been going has been to line drive percentage, which is bad. He is not, uh, he is a fly ball percent of 9.3, which is down from last year. He is a 0% pop-up rate and he is a 37.2% line drive rate. Wow. 37.2. That is astonishing. Yeah, league average is like 24, 25%. I need so. to see where that ranks. How many batted balls against does he have? 43? Okay. We're gonna we're gonna do some stat cast search right here. Yeah, Aaron Bummer. Because that is horrendous. Yeah, Aaron Bummer was one of our favorite pitchers last year for funny reasons only. But also he had a two nine six fifth. But also he was very good, yes. Yeah, he was pretty good. Um if he was on a team that shifted, he could have had like one of the most generational reliever seasons in recent memory yeah i mean the guy like, had... full, like he could have gone 2016 zach Britton. yeah legitimately. Exa- exactly three quarters of the batted balls he was um giving up were ground balls which is uh, a good sign because the league Very. average the league average uh batting average for ground balls last year was like 240 um and the was slugging was probably around 240 you know or you know, less than 300, I would imagine. What um, we're seeing out of Clay Holmes right now is what we could have seen from Aaron Bummer last year. If yeah, the that's true. In. So his, I got, I got the numbers pulled up here. His 37.2% line drive rate ranks one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It ranks 10th highest 
among the uh, at least 400, 479 pitchers with at least 25 batted balls against. Yeah, that's so it's very high. percent Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, top three percent. That's um, that's that's not great. Um, so maybe there's something up with uh, his pitch location. Maybe leaving that sinker up a little more than he would like. Probably. That's that would be my guess. Um. Yeah. Um. That, that so we've sense. already talked about a manager firing. Do we think that Larus is on his way out? Um. I see no reason why not. I think part of it is like I see one reason why not. Well, yeah, oh, the, the owner. Jerry um, Reinsdorf is the one reason why not. Yeah, well, he's, I guess, yeah. I guess technically that that's the only reason he was ever hired. Um, but I think um, I think a lot of it also, as odd as it might sound, it, a lot of it depends on what the Twins are doing because I think if the, if the White Sox hover 500, but they're still like within reach of the AL Central, um, I don't think there's going to be as negative a reaction from, you know, ownership and uh, front office and even just the fan base, even, you know, if they're hovering 500, but they're still within like five games of the twins. Um, I, I see La Russa just sticking around and it's like, oh, you know, they'll, they'll get there eventually. They'll get to the top of that division eventually. But if the twins start taking off and the White Sox stay the same, um, I think there might have to be a change for sure. See, I think even if in that first scenario where they hover 500 and are close to the Twins, they should still fire La Russa. Like, let's oh, not forget I agree. the preseason. <laughs> yeah. And even, like, I, I think the fan base would be on our side. Like, front office and ownership, maybe they'd be like, oh, well, they almost got there. But fan base, I feel like that fan base has got to know, hey, we were supposed to easily win this division, and we didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I agree. For I agree for sure that, I mean, you shouldn't have – he shouldn't be – managing the team in the first place and yeah, yeah he shouldn't have been hired in the first place and <laughs> any any that that hire set that team back so far like they were this is where they were supposed to be competing for a world series and they were supposed to be one of the best teams in the league like we've been preaching that i started preaching it when the jose quintana trade happened and based on the players they've got like there was a reason to celebrate them they got dylan cease and eloy jimenez in that trade yeah. for jose quintana yeah, I mean, any any day with Tony La Russa uh, as manager of the White Sox is kind of a wasted day for that organization, to put it kind of brutally. Um, yeah, it is. It is like uh, it 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 kind of stinks, and and yeah, I mean, like he's he's already the clubhouse already didn't have his back like last year with the whole your mean Mercedes thing. And uh, I, I can't imagine it's gotten much better. There's no reason for him to have the clubhouse now. The The greatest thing that has come out of his tenure was that one video of him running out of the dugout to, like, it was either to argue at an umpire or to, like, there was a there was a fight on the field and he was just running out to, like, protect his guys. I'm going to find it because it's the greatest thing ever. Um, wait, what was Russo running? It was from 2020. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about, right? I I remember the I remember uh, it the, was a, him running. It was a collision at home plate, and he was like going out to argue with the umpire about it. I'm sending you the video right now because it is, it is truly. Just go to YouTube and look up Tony Larusa running if you're watching at home. Or yeah, for because sure. It is a spectacle. It is Usain Bolt himself. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. Um. And. Uh. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna take a look at take a look at this. Tony Larusa running. Yeah, it's literally that's the title of the video. And yeah, man. Look at him go. It yeah, it looks like Yeah, it looks like um he's on a he's yeah, it looks like he's on a he's running on a floor that's like about to break off but he's still trying to be quick like it looks like he's trying to be light on the floor he's running on ice he's That's running like about to, on thin ice like yeah, his manager he's, he's like his, his managerial tiptoes. job he's on his tiptoes but he's still in a rush it's very interesting 
Um, this whole situation, uh, it brought my mind back to uh, uh, Rogers Hornsby's um, managing stint with the Browns because I, or the uh, it's just a fun it's just a funny thing to bring back up and I, I command F his uh, saber page and I looked for trophy and it reminded me of a situation where you know if if the clubhouse doesn't have your back this could happen um, and. I do remember uh, exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, the the owner of the Browns, um, yeah, I think it was the Browns. Um, it might have been the Cubs. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at, at it now, because yeah, he, sure it was the Cubs. Hornsby managed the the Browns for a while. Um, the Browns owned by Bill Vec. Um. Oh, yeah. No, I think it was the Browns. But anyway, so Bill Vec was the owner of this team, we'll just say. And uh, after he fired Rogers Hornsby from, yeah, from the Browns, um, this is what happened. So a quote from Society for American Baseball Research, when Vec got rid of Roger in on June 8. The players were thrilled and presented the owner with a three-foot trophy that inscribed to Bill Vec for the greatest play since the Emancipation Proclamation. And pitcher Gene Bearden said they ought to declare a national holiday in St. Louis. So, you know, maybe they can they can give uh, the owner a trophy. Um, Cherry or- Reinsdorf for finally firing the guy you that only you wanted to hire. Yeah, maybe a three foot trophy would be in consideration. So maybe they should just like t- say, "Hey, they should just show Jerry Ronsdorf this this story and be like, hey, you know, maybe you could get a three foot trophy.' See, but I think like that was what nineteen thirty whatever. What year was that? Yeah, it was in the mid nineteen thirties. Yeah. Yeah. I think the the equivalent of a trophy in twenty twenty two would have to be a statue outside the ballpark. Yeah, or which is like that's a that's a big commitment. Like you have to be, you have to be an AA one type player to get a statue. Yeah, that's very true. Like Nick Foles, or like, or just say Jerry Reinsdorf. Here's an NFT. Gotcha. That too. That um, too. By so, presented by Candy. He'll be yeah. He'll be big into that. He'll big be, NFT. He'll be his like crypto NFT guy. sponsor. Yeah. They have a. I don't know if you've seen Off Base. It's like a new show on MLB Network. It's very much like a. It's like a talk show. Okay. And yeah. they have like a they have a segment where they present like an NFT for like a daily performance every day. It's oh. like a sponsored thing, and it's like, yeah, you know what? Here's here's Jerry Reinsdorf. <laughs> um, yeah, I love that. I mean, yeah, yeah, just pr- just bribe him with like a little statue if you if you fire uh, Tony La Russa and all is forgiven. Yes. And put in, you know, any other candidate. Um. Yeah, so that's that's possible, but anyway, yeah, it, <laughs> like it's weird to ask, you know, is Tony Larissa on the hot seat? Because it kind of depends on one one man's opinion. The only one man wanted him in, so I guess only one man can, I guess, exactly. take him out. <laughs> you know, it's very funny. What if like Larissa's White Sox tenure just goes so miserably, but Reinsdorf lets it go on for so long, and it, at at some point we're like. Do we still think he's a Hall of Famer? Yeah. <laughs> like, have has anyone ever like for like I don't think anyone's ever had a plaque removed. No. For any yeah. reason, because like I know there have been reasons. Like I remember Roberto Alomar had like some severe criminal charges against him a couple of years ago in the Hall of Fame. Like was like, yeah, we're gonna keep him in. Yeah, I think like maybe the Blue Jays Hall of Fame, like or or Cleveland Hall of Fame, like changed things, but the Baseball Hall of yeah. Fame was kept him in yeah yeah um so yeah like and i don't know maybe they'll just force a retirement out of him like oh just looks like in uh mid-june the he wanted to retire (laughs) yeah no i wanted to do another year and a half yeah (laughs) exactly that and i wanted to bring my team to six games below 500 when they should be (laughs) <laughs> when they should have the best record in the American League with a with an even worse run differential. Yeah, <laughs> a run differential worse than the Baltimore Orioles. Right. <laughs> Side note: Just going back to Rogers Hornsby, it is very funny that he is beloved 
and treasured by the St. Louis Cardinals, but absolutely hated by the St. Louis Browns. Like yeah. they literally said, like we should declare a holiday in St. Louis. And like, if you're a Cardinals fan, you're like, yeah, I'll go celebrate Rogers ones. Be why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. The guy yeah, who led sure. the, <laughs> led the national league in the entire quad slash line for six years. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. And when, and when that streak ended, he was the manager of the, of their first world series championship. Exactly. Check out episode 72 or 74. So I think 74 part <laughs> one. If you scroll down enough, you'll find it. Yeah. It's around that range. Go to the baseball history series uh, playlist on YouTube. You'll find it. Um, Fantastic episode. We're a fascinating, fascinating player and and guy. Um, So uh, I don't know. Does that lead into uh, players to highlight? I suppose. Um, All right. So. Um. Now we get into our players to highlight for good and bad reasons, and we will start off with our uh, Friday, June 3rd edition of How about that? Um, So who do you have for us today? I'm looking at a guy from the defending World Series champions, a guy who has had just about everything going right for him, William Contreras of the Atlanta Braves. He has played 19 games this season. He has 71 plate appearances. And in that he is slashing 302, 380, 714 for a 1095 OPS. His 1095 OPS and his 196 weighted runs created plus are second best in Major League Baseball minimum 60 plate appearances. His 714 slugging percentage is also the leader of the 364 hitters with at least 60 plate appearances on the year. Uh, He's been hitting more ground balls this year, but he is making the most out of the fly balls that he hits. Do you want to guess the home run to fly ball ratio that he has currently? Uh, Let's just take a guess of 22%. Okay. Uh, It's 50%. (laughs) Wow. It is 50%. He has seven, seven home runs on, I'm guessing, 14 fly balls. That ratio leads the 449 hitters with at least 20 plate appearances. The average exit velocity on his fly balls is 100.1 miles per hour, and that is tied for fifth among the 411 hitters with at least 25 batted balls. So that is excellent. And the last thing I will leave you with is that William Contreras also has a sweet spot percentage of 38.6%. That is above league average. I believe the league average is around 33. The sweet spot percentage is any batted balls with a launch angle between eight and 32 degrees. And he has 17 batted batted balls on the sweet spot. Chris, I'll give you another shot. Guess his batting average and slugging percentage on these batted balls on the sweet spot. Uh, Batting average. um, I don't know. I don't want to over, I don't want to over guess and make the point stand less. So I don't know. He's batting, uh, he's batting 620 with a, uh, with a, a, uh 1350 slugging okay just out of curiosity if you were to overshoot or like if you were guessing just based on your mind not with the mindset of not one to overshoot what would you have guessed uh maybe maybe like maybe like 750 with a Ooh. with a 2100 slugging yeah he's batting 824 with a 22 for 35 slugging <laughs> i was like you were talking about the overshoot i was like there's no way he's overshooting this yeah (laughs) no way uh william Contreras is having everything go right for him he's hitting the ball in the sweet spot and he's getting the results that he wants to see yeah william Contreras getting a how about that and uh before you recorded you asked if i if i saw your tweet it is i uh i did i forgot that i saw it but um but yeah, that was a very good tweet. Check it out at Daniel underscore Curran um, about the catcher. Yeah, catcher weighted runs created plus leaderboards. Very interesting um, and very fun. Very fun combination at one and two. Um, I do not have the the guy to complete. Very unfortunate. The, uh, I was like, if if he puts Wilson because he's been playing very well as of yeah. late. But if you put Wilson Contreras, I would have ascended. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that would have been, been incredible. I was not going to tell you, obviously, because I don't want to influence your how about that. Yeah, uh, for sure. 
But in the back of my mind, I was like, if he if he picks William Wilson Contreras. Yeah. By the way, if if uh, if anyone's curious, we never tell each other our how about that's or slightly alarming. Yeah. Never planned. That's why sometimes we have the same one. Um, <laughs> but it it adds to the allure of just like, hmm, who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? So it's it's a surprise to us just as well as it is a surprise to the listener. Mm-hmm. Um, so my how about that is um he is not on the defending champions but he was uh he was on them last year and uh he was the actually the world series mvp it is uh jorge soler who is uh i mean really ascending after uh, a tough start with with the marlins this year but in his last 20 games he is hitting 284 with a 10 10 ops and a 182 Weighted runs created plus out of 179 qualifiers in the span is slugging ranks sixth. His OPS ranks ninth and his weighted runs created plus ranks 10th. Um, his slugging trails only Paul Goldschmidt, Mookie Betts, Raphael Devers, Bryce Harper, and Aaron judge. Uh, those are all, you know, all stars, very elite players. Um, guys who, I mean, if they haven't gotten a, you know, 100 million dollar contract yet they will you know with uh rafael devers and aaron judge and uh jorge soler's hard hit rate has gone from 39 percent before the span which was already good to now 54 percent during the span uh out of 193 batters with 50 plus batted balls his hard hit rank uh his hard hit rate ranks uh 12th out of 193 and his barrel rate has gone from 7.8% before the span to 19.7% during the span. Uh, Out of 193 batters, his barrel rate ranks fifth. And also, uh, in terms of expected statistics, he's doing like as good or almost better than, uh, than his actual statistics. His expected weighted on base average ranks sixth out of 193 batters with 50 plus batted balls so jorge soler has really ascended and uh, been a a very good hitter for the miami marlins over the last 20 games and he is getting a um so now we go from the highs to the lows we were talking players and subjects that have been underperforming with our Friday, June 3rd, 2022 edition of... Slightly alarming. Who do you got for us today? I'm going with another catcher, and I'm going with a guy that was on a team that we talked about earlier. I'm talking about Yasmani Grandal because yeah. it has just been a rough go for him. He is slashing 160, 270, 213 with a 483 OPS, and I believe like 170 plate appearances. Uh, his 48 weighted runs created plus is the second worst among the 181 hitters with at least 150 plate appearances. And his 230, his 213 slugging is the worst of that list. And his ISO of 053 is the seventh worst. You want to know how bad it is for him right now? Let's do it. Rymel Tapia has a higher ISO than Yasmani Grandal. Oh boy. Yes. The ground ball king. Yes, that is that is just that's all you need to know. Yeah. <laughs> His ISO has gone down 227 points since last year. That is by far the worst decrease in baseball. Uh, just to give you an idea of how bad a drop of 227 ISO is, Teoscar Hernandez had a 227 ISO last year. Yeah, very and That's good a guy who's him. known for his slugging. Yeah. Which is ISO is isolated slugging. Um, yeah, it, it is slugging percentage minus bad and average. Isolated power, I believe it's actually called. Yeah. But point is, the power is completely gone for Yasmani Grandal. He has 32 batted balls with a launch angle of at least 29 degrees, and he is over 32. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He is one of just four hitters with at least 25 of such batted balls with nothing to show for it. He does have one sack fly, I think, which I guess... You know, one out of 32, you'd expect – you're 32, you'd expect one to happen to come in a certain situation. But it things just have not been going his way, and he's been one of the worst hitters in all of baseball. Yeah. Did you say uh, 0 for 32 on batted balls with a launch angle of 29? 
Yes. I mean, you know, last year, Yasmani Grandal had a absurdly high walk rate and some great power, which made up for his low batting average, but he doesn't have any of that to bail him out this year. He does have a high walk rate. It's very funny with a guy that has a 13% walk rate is one of the worst in the league with weighted runs created plus, but that's where we're at because yeah. of, because of the power outage. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. Potentially difference in baseball makes a little bit of a difference, but uh, Didn't yeah, make that mean, much of a difference. Can't make a, can't bring him from a, like a 950 OPS to a 480 OPS. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, Yasmani Grandal. Slightly alarming. Um, so that brings me to my slightly alarming, um, who is uh, Yuli Gurriel. He is hitting, and this is a full season. Yeah, like yours, it's a full season, slightly alarming. Uh, he is hitting 223 with a 623 OPS, 81 OPS plus, and 81 weighted runs created plus. Uh, his OPS plus has dropped 51 points from last year, and his weighted runs created plus has dropped 53 points. Um, and his and out of uh, 161 qualifiers, his OPS ranks 139th, his on base percentage ranks 151st, and his walk rate ranks 153rd. And also his expected stats are very, very bad. His expected stats are actually worse than his, uh, you know, actual stats, uh, which is rare when you're underperforming by that much. Uh, His expected WOBA is in the third percentile and it ranks last out of 185 batters with uh, 100 plus batted balls this year. So pretty much out of any qualifying hitter, his expected WOBA is the worst. Yuli Gurriel, he was one of my early how about that's from last year. And one of the things I pointed out was his improvements in uh, walk rate and chase rate. And uh, he did have a very significant improvement last year in both those categories. His 9.8% walk rate last year was, I think, a career high, um, but it has gone back down to 4.0%. So it's been cut, cut by more than half so far this year. Also, his chase rate has gone from 26.1% to 33.7%. And his whiff rate has gone from 13.9% to 17.4%. So both significant increases and uh, explains the uh, heavy decrease in walk rate. And then in terms of quality of contact, uh, not very good either. His average exit velocity has gone from 89.8 miles per hour to 86 0.7 0.7 miles per hour, so over a three mile per hour drop. And also his pop-up rate has increased by over four percentage points. And his pop-up rate overall is 11th highest out of 185 batters with 100 plus batted balls. So uh, nothing's really been working for Yuli Gurriel. He is chasing way more, uh, chasing way more balls as well as, you know, hitting, getting a lot softer contact, um, even swinging and missing more. So and popping up the ball more. So Yuli, Yuli Guriel is getting a slightly alarming. Um, all right. So yeah. quickly going back to uh, William Contreras, there is a very real chance we could see both Contreras brothers making the all-star game, which would be sick. That would be sick. Yeah. Like the only thing that's stopping that right now would be William having a small sample size, but who's making those decisions? Who's picking the reserves? Yeah, it's it's the that would be his manager. It would be his manager. Yeah, it, it's not the fans. Yeah, the like if anyone has seen it, even with the small sample size, it would be Brian Snicker. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Yeah, he would just need to. He would need to keep this up because Wilson's probably going to be there. Like the a, the Cubs are going to need a representative, and I mean, who else really has earned it on that team right now? Except for like, if you want to be really edgy, maybe like Keegan Thompson. Yeah, or Scott but F. Ross. <laughs> Scott F. Yeah, like I don't think. No offense to them, but I don't see them making the All Star team. Yeah, no. I mean, yeah, Wilson Contreras has been. Well, I mean, he's been like the best catcher in baseball, pretty much, at least offensively. Yeah. Um, like uh, especially with, you know, just uh, if you bring in wins above replacement and offensive runs above average. Um, but yeah, that does it for players to highlight. Um, and now, yeah, we will get into uh, a preview of the weekend ahead. 
uh, some of these series have already started. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we'll talk about, so I'm going to talk about um, some series to watch. Daniel will go over the day by day matchups that pique his interest and uh, the best matchups of the day. So as far as series to watch, um, yeah, we have, uh, we have, of course, the Desperation Bowl at Citizens Bank Park, a three-game set between the Phillies and Angels. And also, you know, we'll see if we can finally settle that 2012 debate of who's going to be better, Mike Trout or Bryce Harper. Um, we'll see. It all comes down to this three-game series. It has not come down to the 10 years that they've yeah. played before this. They'll scrap all that. They'll scrap all that to the side. <laughs> One of them is playing with a new manager for the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's funny to think they've their contracts were over uh, seven hundred fifty million combined. It's pretty wild. Yeah. Um, well deserved though. Uh, and so then, <laughs> going away from that, there are some matchups between some division leaders or almost division leaders. Uh, Blue Jays are in second in the AL East, and they're facing the AL Central. Uh, leading twins uh blue jays are on a, a bit of a hot run so we'll see how the twins match up against them at the rogers center um and then uh there are there is a uh, brewers padres um padres are in a playoff spot brewers are leading the nl central and you have a fantastic pitching matchup tonight which daniel will get into yes yes and, that is match of the uh, night spoiler alert and then the two best teams in the National League record-wise, their series started last night. It is Dodgers-Mets. Uh, that is going to be a fun one and a, and a great test for the Mets. Um, probably their biggest test of the year so far. Um, you know, I guess poetically, you could always say the biggest test is themselves. But in terms of uh, opponents, it is... Uh, I mean, when you're talking about the Mets, that's actually legitimate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can the Mets overcome the Mets? The Mets, yeah. Outside of the Mets, the like Dodgers here's the thing: the biggest test this year. You know, there's one constant with the Mets, and it's that on July 1st, a check will be written to Bobby Bonilla. That's true. Like we will, like low Mets will always exist until 2035, no matter how good the team is, because we will always have one day to laugh at the Mets. Yeah, they could win the next 13 championships, and they yeah. will always have Bobby Bonilla Day. Yep. Um, but yeah, outside of themselves, the Mets' biggest challenge is uh, this weekend against the Dodgers, which they lost last night two to nothing. Yeah, they lost last night two to nothing. So uh, yeah, we'll see the rest of the series. What do you got for day by day matchups? So for on Friday, I'm looking at. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of good matchups tonight. You got a uh, Miles Michaelis versus Marcus Stroman in Cardinals Cubs. You have. Alex Cobb pitching for the Giants tonight. So the Marlins are going to get like 13 hits, all of them being ground ball singles. <laughs> you have Shane Bieber pitching tonight for the Guardians uh, at Camden Yards against the Orioles. You have Merrill Kelly versus JT Brubaker in Diamondbacks and P Pirates. Garrett Coles going for the Yankees at Yankee Stadium against the uh, Tigers. You have Shane McClanahan going for the Rays against the White Sox at uh, guaranteed right field. He'll be facing Vince Velasquez, which is the Rays definitely have the upper hand in the starting pitching matchup. Logan Gilbert versus Dane Dunning in Mariners Rangers, two guys that have been quietly been having great seasons. Jose Urquidy versus Brady Singer. Brady Singer also quietly having a very good season. Max Freed versus Chad Cool in Braves Rockies at Coors Field. Nathan Ovaldi versus James Caprillion in Red Sox A's at the Coliseum. And Chris Bassett versus Tyler Anderson uh, at Dodger Stadium. Tyler Anderson, by the way, has some of the best strikeout to walk numbers in the league. Matchup of the night comes from Padres Brewers. A lot of great matchups late tonight, but Joe Musgrove versus Corbin Burns is as good as it gets. Truly. Yeah, I mean, those yeah. are like, you could argue, um, like they're, they're two of the top four pitchers in, in the National League this year. Yes. On Saturday, you have uh, Dylan Bundy versus Jose Barrios in the uh, in the like uh, I'm trying to think of a phrase here. Dylan Bundy as like a 
reestablished pitcher versus Jose Barrios, who's trying to reestablish himself as what he used to be. Yeah. I guess. Tristan McKenzie versus Tyler Wells in Guardians and Orioles. That's a under the radar, pretty good matchup. You have Ronesny Contreras pitching for the Pirates against the Diamondbacks. Pirates have uh, been quite a story lately. They swept the Dodgers. <laughs> yeah. At Dodger Stadium, as everyone expected. Yeah. <laughs> You have Marco Gonzalez facing the Rangers for the Mariners. You have Nick Pavetta versus Paul Blackburn in Red Sox A's. Luis Garcia will be facing the Royals at Kauffman for the Astros. Tyler Malley will be pitching once again at home. He's only been pitching at home lately against the Nationals, though, so that should be an opponent that's beatable. The Reds, by the way, have been playing some better baseball. Uh, Dylan Cease versus Drew Rasmussen in White Sox Rays. Lo- oh, that's that's patch for the night. I'm not going to say that yet. Mackenzie Gore versus Aaron Ashby in Padres Brewers. That's another fun matchup. Two young lefties that have been having some good years. Uh, Aaron Ashby struck out 12 in his last outing. Michael Lorenzen will be facing the Phillies in Angels Phillies. Spencer Strider versus Kyle Freeland. Strider has been having some great uh, strikeout numbers this year. David Peterson versus Walker Bueller in Mets Dodgers. Matchup of the night comes from, or matchup of the afternoon, I should say, comes from Giants Marlins. Logan Webb versus Pablo Lopez. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. that's that's going to be good. There is for some ground balls. I'm pretty sure <laughs> Lopez is a pretty ground ball heavy guy. Ground ball heavy. Yeah. Jordan Montgomery will be going for the Yankees in the finale of Tigers-Yankees. That should be a sweep. Zach Plezak will be going for the Guardians against the Orioles. Zach Allen versus Zach Thompson in the nice. uh, all tr- – not only the all-Zach matchup, but all the all – uh, traded from the Marlins matchup. <laughs> Very true. Patrick Sandoval will go for the Angels in the finale of Angels Phillies. Kevin Gosman will go for the Blue Jays against the Twins at the Rogers Center. Luis Castillo will go for the Reds against Patrick Corbin for the Nationals. Giolito mm-hmm. will face the Rays on Sunday. You will have Framber Valdez facing the Royals at Kaufman on Sunday. Mike Clevenger versus Eric Lauer in the finale of Padres Brewers. Charlie Morton will be going for the Braves against the Rockies. Frankie Montas will be going for the A's against the Red Sox. That's uh could be a could be some Red Sox scouts at that game. Julio Arias mm. will be going for the Dodgers against the Mets. Adam Wainwright versus Justin Steele will be on Sunday Night Baseball. And matchup of the day comes from Mariners and Rangers. George Kirby versus Martin Perez. Nice, nice, nice. While we're while we're on that topic, MLB Network did the greatest troll I've ever seen recently, where they they have an award that they give out every month. It's called like the Pitching Hand Award, I think it's called on MLB Central. Yeah, where it's given to like uh, a pitcher who like does well in a month and like has like a heavy workload or something like that. Hmm. And they were they were announcing it for the month of May the other day, and they were doing like a big introduction to the player, sort of like we do on how about that, where it was, they did and I, verbatim. It was like from Alex Rodriguez to Derek Jeter, this franchise has had some legendary players in their organization over the last two decades. This, this left-handed pitcher is having a breakout season and he is on his way to the top of the ERA leaderboards. I guess you could say he is just nasty. The pitching, the pitching hand award winner is Martin Perez. Wait, <laughs> I swear to God, they said that. Don't know why Derek Jeter was involved. They could have gotten away with just saying A Rod and like Pudge Rodriguez, maybe. Um. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. They they just completely set it up to be Nestor Cortez, but it was Martin Perez. Um. Yeah, he's never been on the Yankees. No. And no, like they, yeah, they completely set it up. Like it was yet yeah, Derek Nestor. Jeter? Did they say Derek? maybe maybe Jeter wasn't there? But I thought I heard it. Maybe it was Alex Rodriguez and Pudge Rodriguez. It, that would have made a lot more sense. But they definitely did show Yankees highlights during that part, and they also literally showed like Nestor Cortez pitching as well. Yeah, and they they ended it by saying he's just nasty because his nickname is Nasty Nestor. Yeah, uh, yeah. They just okay. completely turned on the audience and was like nope it's martin perez and it's funny because like given the criteria of that award martin perez was probably the most deserving candidate but also i don't think i'm getting angry if they give it to cortez because he's deserving as well true yeah yeah for sure 
Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, Derek Hughes so connections to the Rangers. And it's gonna be tough to think about. I that might have not happened, but Alex Rodriguez was definitely there. Yeah, Derek Jeter might have been there. Like I, like I don't want to like you know when like you see something you're like, did I see that? Yeah, like, true. I'm pretty sure I saw Jeter in there, but like I'm having second guesses because it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, I'm trying to think of some other Yankees Rangers connections outside of like Joey Gallo. <laughs> I don't think they would yeah. say Joey Gallo. No. But yeah, Pudge Rodriguez. Leg- legendary there. Yankees player, Joey Gallo. Yeah. Who um, was hitting ninth last night. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Like That poor guy. I wonder I if, can't... like, we might get it. We might be getting into what if the Yankees actually trade Joey Gallo with the trade deadline. Yeah. Like, seriously, why not? Yeah. Potentially. I mean, he doesn't have. If yeah, if you have Judge Stanton, like they had, they can so they can clearly survive without his his production. Why not? Like, and they probably have other options they can put in the outfield. I know that Aaron Hicks hasn't exactly been that, but like, no. what if they like? I know a lot of Yankee fans want them to trade for Andrew Benatendi. Yeah, like you you trade for Benatendi, you put him in Gallo's place, you trade Gallo for, even like you could even play a seller role and get prospects for him yeah i think the only problem with that would be like he's only got one year you yeah. know this he doesn't year. have a lot of value but there could be a team out there that's like you know what we've seen what he can do and we we're making a playoff push like what if what about the white Sox? right like they have they have leori garcia playing right fields they're a team that needs reinforcement in the offense yeah and i guess seems like a fit. I guess if like, one don't one, get me wrong, I don't think year. I don't think Joey Gallo, you're getting like top 100 prospects for him. I mean, the Yankees didn't even get a top 100 prospect or didn't have to give up a top 100 prospect for him last year. Yeah, but you know, you can give up a you can get something for him because he obviously hasn't given you much, and there are other places where you can seek uh, the kind of the kind of talent he has because like you already have Judge and Stanton who have very similar play styles. It's not like you know, that, that absence of walk rate and a lot of home runs is going to be lost on that team. Yeah, that would be interesting for sure. Um, if if the Yankees, like, sold one piece, like, in in a uh, in a deadline where I imagine they would be mostly buying. Um, mm-hmm. All right. Well, um, yeah, by the way, the trade deadline is probably going to be so disappointing this year after last year's one. Oh yeah, hundred percent. But like, be... it's not even fair. Like, it's, it's not, not even fair. a fair thing to, because we were also, <laughs> like, we were also in a fun setting for last year's trade deadline. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah. we were, yeah. Literally, good times. most of the trades were happening like on a car ride. On a car ride, and also in a vacation house. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, that's where that's that vacation house is where I found out Red Sox are getting Austin Davis. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Places, places like t- deals like that, you just remember where I remember you're... I remember sitting at that counter seeing uh Jeff pa- like I got a notification from Jeff Pass and in all caps, I did not tweet that. And it was uh <laughs> when Bob Nightingale fell for the uh like the Jeff with three Fs pass and tweeting that the Yankees traded for Chris Bryant. <laughs> oh my god legendary probably the best moment of it like that's the only way this trade deadline can surpass last year is if we, is if we have another one of those moments maybe two yeah if we get two yeah the, that surpasses all the you know max scherzer yeah. trey turner chris bryant anthony rizzo javier, javier Baez, 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 armstrong jose all, that, all them being moved yeah it's, and jose barrios like all those guys. You know what's very funny is we talk about the twins. Like when we talked about them last year, it's like, well, you know, you don't have Jose Barrio, so you're probably punting next year. They're good. They're good this year, and they'd probably be worse with Jose Barrio given his <laughs> performance so this true. year, which is very funny. Yeah. Which not that know. like Austin Martin has kind of plummeted as a prospect since, and I haven't checked on Woods Richardson in a while, but still like yeah you could say they won that deal just based on barrios yeah and they're not paying him they're not going to be paying him 127 million exactly um yeah so all right that should do it for 
the 186th installment of a replacement radio uh we hope you enjoyed up on a, coming up on 200 by the way yeah coming up on 200 we're gonna have another draft sometime this summer yes, we um, so let me, that'll let me be check fun. on possible I think, dates i think um i think the last time i checked it lined up with around the uh necbl all-star games so we'll probably have to do oh. it before then um but I mean, it's yeah. Well, we'll just we'll just timeless, release this two hundred and do it. Timeless whenever. draft. Yeah, and we already know what the topic's going to be. Yeah, yeah, we, we've already selected it. Um, so that'll be fun. Yeah, two hundred um is uh is somewhat around the corner. You know, almost almost two months away. Um, so that is going to be fun. Um, so we hope you enjoy this one. If uh if you're if you uh, are listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and want to watch the conversation as it happens, go to our YouTube channel and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It is called Above Replacement Radio. Uh, if you want to follow us on social media, follow me on Twitter at Chris underscore Gianta and follow Daniel on both Twitter and Instagram at Daniel underscore Curran and follow the show Instagram at Above Replacement Radio for all the show needs. We hope you enjoyed this one and we hope to see you uh on monday or tuesday next week where we will be talking all the happenings in major league baseball once again see you then this conversation this conversation is over is over